Before we start, here are some things I need to disclose. First of all, I don't live in Jakarta. I live in Gading Serpong, 20 kilometers west of Jakarta, and I don't commute there on a regular basis. In fact, my commute is actually a 10-minute bike ride. The second thing to consider is that I mainly travel on weekends, and when I do visit on weekdays, I travel outside of rush hour most of the time. The third thing to consider is that while I've ridden all 13 BRT corridors, I haven't ridden all of them end-to-end. There are a lot of lines where I haven't reached the end terminus and I'll disclose that because I'll only be ranking the section of line that I have ridden. Corridor 1 goes from Kota to Block M. So we're gonna rate this whole thing here. This line has some really nice shelters like Bundaran Hai, Tosari, and Matami. Actually, most of the shelters have been renovated, which is nice. The shelters are big, they're clean, they're airy, they don't look like a prison. Unfortunately, this line is not that well separated from traffic but it's for a good reason because they're currently building an MRT uh, from Bundaran High until the old town so it's sort of understandable how this northern section of the line is not that well separated another weakness is block M once you get below Senayan the bus lanes the dedicated bus lanes sort of stop and you're getting into mixed traffic also another weakness this line ends at block M terminal as its southernmost uh, terminus and there you have to sort of wait because there's just so many buses and the platform's not long enough so you often end up waiting five minutes to get off which is not good that's a five minute delay which might not sound like much but it adds up which is again another weakness not that big of a weakness as we will see with some other lines but as i said before it's not that well separated from traffic so i'm going to have to give this line an a tier it could have been b but the nice stations and the nice fleet sort of saved this line Line 2 runs from Pulau Gadung Terminal to Monas and I have ridden this line from Tempaka Timur to Monas. This line itself is pretty well separated from Tempaka Timur all the way to Senen but after Senen, this line has a monumental problem. After Senen, this line sort of makes a loop around Monas and this loop has a lot of sections that are not great separated and that area of Jakarta is pretty no notorious for congestion. There are some worse areas still but that one is still pretty bad. This of course can cause serious delays and while I haven't experienced this yet, I can imagine this happening. There is also not that much of a saving grace like Corridor 1. Of course, Corridor 1 isn't that well separated but it has nice stations etc. But Corridor 2 doesn't have that much. Corridor 2 stations are still mostly the old ones from like over 10 years ago so it's not that nice. Of course, they're trying to rebuild the shelters. Some of them like for example Pulomas and Sunan Shelter has been rebuilt. But still, most of the shelters are still old, but at least the fleet is nice. The fleet is of similar quality to Corridor 1. You've got big bendy buses. When you don't get a bendy bus, you still get a bus with two doors. So overall, this corridor is great until you reach Sunen and then it becomes a disaster. So this one quite fatal weak spot unfortunately gives this line a B tier. There are some worse ones, I promise you. Corridor 3 runs from Monas to Kalideras Terminal and I've ridden this line from Pasaki which is just one stop away from Kalideras all the way to Monas. So I've ridden 90% of this line. This line itself is mostly pretty well separated. There are some weak spots like a uh, passing flyover but honestly I'd rather have that than have to deal with a railway crossing and there's also that section of road after Ere Sumberwaras that is not that doesn't have dedicated bus lanes again causing delays. But overall besides ignoring those two this is still a pretty well uh, isolated corridor. Much better so in corridor 1 actually. The shelters themselves though aren't all that nice. Of course they have rebuilt some of them but there's still a large amount of shelters they're still old and they did this weird thing in uh, Jalambar where they decided to put ceramic tiles instead of just bare concrete for I don't know what reason but it's not that practical I mean does it look nice I guess so but it makes the floor slippery the saving grace here is that the fleet is nice they use uh, I believe they use uh, some bendy buses like uh, I saw I saw a Scania bendy bus there but I'm not sure if it's corridor 3 or corridor 8 I'll check on that later but they use bendy buses and they use the two door buses so no single door uh, Hino buses here so there is one uh, minus points for cutting this line short this could have been an 8 here but they 
cut this line short at Monas. Monas shelter is pretty bad. I mean, it's big, but it's not long, which is a problem because you have passengers piling up who are waiting for different buses to come, and that's... I've actually missed the bus because of this design, so not good. Previously, the line actually went to Bundaran Hai, where you can directly transfer to the MRT, and then you have access to a large chunk, chunk of South Jakarta. So imagine that. Kalidars in West Jakarta to the MRT in Central and South Jakarta, all with just one transfer. Unfortunately, that option is gone now because they decide to cut the shortcut the line short for better headways. I'm not even sure if the headways actually increase. Uh, so there is that. So B tier. Corridor 4 runs from Pulau Gadung to Duku Atas and I've ridden this section from Duku Atas all the way to Pemuda Rawamangun where you can transfer to LRT Jakarta. This section of this line here has a, is probably one of the most well separated lines from traffic. In fact, the only weak spot I can find is uh, the section near Manggarai where that's the only weak spot. Besides that, it's completely separated. The service itself is also good. The lines are, the buses are frequent and when the bus does arrive, it's us it's always a two door or have I seen a bendy bus there? I'm not sure. Probably not, but most of the time you get two door buses, which is which of course improves, uh, which are nicer and they improve boarding time. The shelters are the same, they themselves are a bit mixed. There are definitely some older shelters, some there being being uh renovated like uh Pasar Rumput, and some that are new, like uh Mangarai Shelter and Dukuatas. Also, just to add, but the integration with the LRT is actually pretty good. Like it doesn't throw you in the middle to, in the side of the street with a tiny broken sidewalk, but instead it actually gives you a sky bridge. Because this line doesn't really have any weakness for well, apart from that one. But you could say to say this line literally only has one weakness and it's not too much of a deal. I'm gonna give this line an S tier. Yes, our first S tier here. It's a great line. Might need to do something about that that uh weak spot in Mangare, but otherwise this is probably one of the best lines in Transjakarta. Corridor 5 runs from Ancol to Matraman Baru and I'm glad to say that I've ridden this line the whole way through. This line itself is very well separated from traffic. In fact, I'm actually surprised by how well separated one weak spot in Senen. That's all I can really remember. That's the only time where the bus has to jump into mixed traffic. But besides that, this line is from end to end is completely separated from traffic. Unfortunately, this this quality cannot doesn't really translate to the fleet. Because the fleet mostly uses single door Hino RK8 PPD buses. These buses are fine. I actually kind of like them. They feel rugged, but for the average commuter, they're rough. Like they use a manual transmission, so each gear shift is really does throw you around. The single door makes boarding a long time. If you're lucky, you could get a bendy bus, like what I did in one of my videos. In this case, it's nice. The service is also well. It arrives every five minutes or so which is not the most frequent one, but it's probably around average at this point. There are some worse ones, trust me. With that, I have to give this line an A tier. Corridor 6 starts from Duku Atas and ends in Ragunan, and honestly, I don't really have that many bad things to say about it. Because first of all, you start in Duku Atas, and then you make your way down through Kuningan, and then you dive beneath Gatot Subroto Road in a tunnel, so while this tunnel does not have a dedicated bus lane, I honestly rather have that compared to just going head first against that disaster of a road. Then you go to sections of uh, South Jakarta where you finally end up in Ragunan and this is where you have the only weak spot. When you do arrive in Ragunan Zoo, you sort of have to wait in line. Well, not you, but the buses because the platform's not long enough to handle all of those buses coming together at that one spot. So it does take some time to actually get off. but. Really, apart from that, that's really the only weakness this line has. The buses itself are nice, you don't have those single door buses. So I don't recall there being bendy buses either here. Uh, the shelters themselves are also alright. I mean, there is a mix. There's a mix of good and bad, and there are some that are really nice, they're new, and they're integrated with the soon-to-be-open LRT. So by the time you're watching this, it's probably already open. Overall, I give this line an S tier on par with Corridor 4. Yes, our second S tier. The same cannot be said about the next one. Corridor 7 goes from Kampung Melayu to Kampung Rambutan. So because Kampung Melayu bus shelter is currently being revitalized, it now makes this weird loop. I remember starting my ride from Jatinegara Premier Hospital before making my way down all to Pasar Induk Ramat Jati. 
That, so that will be the section of line I'll be reviewing. The line itself starts great. It has dedicated bus lanes uh, until it doesn't. Once you start going down to areas near uh, Kramat Jati, uh, yeah. Basically, after you, you you go south past through Pegese, the dedicated bus lanes stop and you're left with this disastrously congested four-lane road. Uh, no bus lanes. Uh, the shelters are tiny. The headways are all right. I think that's every five minutes in my experience. Not the best for BRT, but it's about average. The fleet itself is also a complete and total disaster. I do not recall seeing anything other than single door uh, Hino buses because even Corridor 5 usually has the occasional bendy bus. So the fleet is a disaster. The grade separation is a disaster. The only saving grace is the headway, so not by much. So this is by far the worst BRT line in Transjakarta. It gets an F tier. I'm sorry. Corridor 8 starts from Harmony until Lebak Bulus. Unfortunately, because Harmony has completely disintegrated, it now goes to Pasar Baru. And honestly, I'm not complaining about this new route because suddenly Pondok Indah and Central Park are a single bus ride away. Unfortunately, what this line makes up in uh, mall connections, it does fail in a lot of other places. First of all, is the headways. I mean, in paper, the headways are fine. Right? I think they're also every five minutes. In practice, uh, the bus bunching situation is so severe that you'll often have two or three buses bunching together and nothing for the next 20 minutes. Uh, first hand experience. Operation from traffic is generally good until you go to Pondok Indah, which is actually a pretty critical critical weak spot because Pondok Indah is a massive uh, trip generator. So from Pondok Indah all the way to that loop in Lebak Bulus and back to Pondok Indah, there is practically no separation. I'm guessing this is the reason why all the buses are bunched up. And that area isn't just like, oh, but there's no, no traffic. No, that, that area is disastrously prone to congestion. Oh, and one last thing, the fleet is all right. Uh, what I've noticed is that the buses are nice, they have two doors, but they're a bit smaller. Like, they're, they're a bit smaller than uh, the usual two-door buses. Uh, I guess they weren't expecting demand on this line to be particularly high, unlike the other lines. So, the fleet is alright. Uh, no, the fleet is nice. The great separation is uh, kind of like Corridor 2. It's, uh, it's great until you reach a certain point and it becomes a disaster. The service is a bit questionable, so I'm going to have to give this a C tier. Corridor 9 goes from Fluid to Pinang Ranti and this one's actually a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to uh, separation from traffic. Uh, above Esparman Podomoro City uh, all the way to Fluid, this line's actually pretty well separated. If we're only ranking this section of line, I would be uh, giving this a solid uh, B or even A tier. Unfortunately, below Esparman Podomoro City all the way to uh, Tawang, this is where things get a bit messy. I mean, yes, there is separation from traffic, but does it really matter if your bus lane keeps getting blocked by cars entering and exiting the highway? You see, the problem here with Corridor 9 is that it's the bus lane is sandwiched between uh, between the highway and an arterial road and there are lots of on and off ramps so there's a lot of interference and if something goes wrong which always happens during rush hour the buses get stuck in their own dedicated bus lanes they're basically locked in this has led to uh, catastrophic delays uh, not to mention there's also a highway section the highway is actually prone to congestion so there is that before ending in Pinangranti Terminal which is apparently an area also prone to traffic so I will put this disclaimer I've only ridden this line from Pluit all the way to BNN. The fleet is actually pretty nice. It's actually one of the redeeming features. You got big Scania bendy buses. Like, that's like one of the best buses in the in the Transjakarta fleet. So you also get those single door buses occasionally. It's a, it's a pretty mix. You pretty much find everything in this line. Another issue is the shelters. Even the new one doesn't matter. Old ones, new ones, they suffer from the same problem. Is that they're too narrow. As is what's expected when you try to sandwich a BRT line between a highway and, a, and an arterial road. I think Esparman Podomoro City bus shelter. I mean, I've been there multiple times. It's like the best example. You have three shopping malls. Who knows how many offices and apartment buildings next to it, most notably being uh, APL Tower. And what's serving all of that? A bus shelter that's smaller than my bedroom. Even the new ones, Chawang, which is uh, considerably bigger or well, more accurately longer. Uh, the stairs are tiny. This is a massive uh, bottleneck. So overall, with all of this uh, combination of good and bad, I'm going to have to give this a D tier. I'm starting to get a bit more harsh because really, I've experienced the, the nasty side of this line. Corridor 10 goes from Tanjung Priok all the way to 
PGC and I actually have some good things to say about this line because the thing is I've never actually written this line until very recently in which case I wrote the section from PGC so of course the section to PGC is in a different line all the way to uh, Suntar Klapa Gading this line is beneath the highway which is great I'd rather have it like that beneath the highway instead of sandwiched between a highway and an arterial road. Another thing to add is that the whole bus shelter beneath a six lane highway thing or is it an eight lane highway? I'm not sure but the bus shelters beneath a giant highway thing does have a nice side effect is that the shelters don't really get too hot i mean sunlight can't really enter now can it so so the climate control on these shelters is actually slightly better than what you find in other ones it doesn't really get nearly as hot as other shelters so that's another plus point the shelters are all right i think though most of them are actually a bit old so there is that the fleet is nice uh, uh, most of the time you get two door buses uh i think there's an occasional bendy bus there though i can't confirm that the grade separation is actually pretty great in fact I don't actually recall any place where there is no separated. Of course, there are some weaknesses because there are U-turns and cars often block bus lanes when there are U-turns. Unfortunately, I've only, well, fortunately, actually, I've only written this line on weekends. I don't know how bad it gets on weekdays. But with ignoring that, that's, this line is actually pretty well separated. Uh, so I'm going to have to give this an 8 year. Corridor 11 goes from Pulau Gebang Terminal all the, way, all the way to Matraman Baru, though it previously went to Kampung Melayu, so we all know what's happening there right now. I've written this line from Matraman Baru all the way to Stasiun Klender, and honestly, I generally like this line. I mean, it's well separated, the fleet is nice, the only weak spot I can actually find is that weird loop between Matraman Baru and Kampung Melayu. That, if that place gets congested, I imagine that can cause delays, but apart from that section, the line is pretty well separated, like, especially the line that's uh, parallel to the railway line, Cikarang line. I also like to think about this line as being the sort of local alternative to the Cikarang line because the Cikarang, Cikarang line's uh, station spacing is quite big. I mean, trains are often going 90 km per hour over there much faster than the usual 70 or 80 uh, but this this line provides a sort of local alternative if you're within that line but you're sort of too far away from the stations i also noticed that this line isn't all that well all that well used so correct me if i'm wrong because i've only written this line twice uh okay the first time was a bit crowded but the second time wasn't all that much let's just say i've been through much much more used lines i'm guessing the railways the railway uh Cikarang line might have something to do with it but overall from what I've experienced this is a B tier a solid B tier but with a massive grain of salt please take this with a massive grain of salt <laughs> corridor 12 goes from Pluit all the way to Tanjung Priok via Kota Sunter I've written this line from Pluit to Sunter Kelapa Gading and I have some bad news about this line because I recall a time where this line uses some pretty nice buses unfortunately all of that I think is gone or well moved more accurately now I don't know where but now this line uses single door buses that's not the worst of it the great se the separation from traffic of this line is pretty bad there isn't really much separation at all in fact it really feels more like a frequent non-BRT line than an actual BRT line. Uh, the only sections I recall that are actually separate is uh, the section between uh, Kota all the way to some parts of Sunter because it goes to Manga Dua and I recall that uses a section of Corridor 5 that is separated. And of course the line part of line that passes through Corridor 9 near Plo it's all separated and then the final stretch of this line uses Corridor 10 which is again well separated. But what connects these sections of uh, separation? Well, nothing actually. This line can get stuck in traffic. What's unforgivable, however, is the frequencies because this line runs every 10 minutes. Wow, 10 minutes for a BRT line and sometimes you'll be waiting for even more. I recall actually waiting slightly over 10 minutes. That would be great for a non-BRT line, but this is a BRT line, which is bad. And this is not just like a like those lines where you have the line 9 and the 9 runs frequently and then you have 9C that runs every 10 minutes. No, this is the main line, the absolute main line and it runs every 10 minutes. Not to mention, there is 
a bit of an overcrowding problem. Uh, the section between Kota all the way to Mangadua, because you know, Mangadua is quite a big shopping destination, is pretty crowded, but once you pass through there, it's empty again. Which made me think, make a, like, a, we call it a poros, which is a line that doesn't really go end to end. Some buses you'll probably just rotate within Kota and Mangadua. Just a suggestion to, you know, if you really don't have enough buses to make this line run at least every five minutes then do that instead this one gets an e tier because this really feels more like frequent non-brt line than an actual brt line corridor 13 goes from chiladuk to tendayan and i have things to say about this line because when you start in chiladuk all the way to adamalik this line is practically uh like corridor 7 it's a disaster i mean the buses are nicer but if we're ranking only that section this line is definitely getting an e tier because the traffic is awful and yet you don't even bother with any form of separation like the brt creep is real well fortunately once you pass through adamalik you literally get lifted up to the heavens in the sense that you're now fully separated from the chaos that is happening below and this alone gives this line a solid A tier. Am I going to el elaborate more? Well yes because I mean there isn't really much to complain really. I mean the fleet is nice, there aren't any bendy buses but you still get those two-door buses. In fact maybe there are, I just can't remember but I don't recall seeing bendy buses that's for sure. I, I don't recall seeing uh, the single door buses. Another thing to consider is that the frequencies are all right. I mean, they're not the best. I feel like there are lines that are running even more frequently, but this one's all right. I think it's every five minutes. Remember, we're only ranking the 13, not the 13 B, C, D, E, F, I don't know. And yes, I am completely aware the disaster that L13E's uh, circumcision has been, but really, we're ranking the, the 13, not the 13E. I don't want this to turn into another L13E rant. There is just one weakness I want to address, and that is uh, this line is a bit of a workout to use, literally. You, there's a lot of long sky bridges, a lot of stairs. Byron Sky Bridge is great, it makes transiting within the commuter line and Trans Jakarta so much easier. That, but that's still a 500 meter walk. If your if occurrence, 500 meters is 10 minutes, 10 minutes of walking. So it might be good for health, but it's not good for travel times, that's for sure. The good news is if you don't want to walk that much and you still don't want to transit in Tana Abang, uh, one bees or you open every day. So feel free to use that instead. But overall, great line. There are some weaknesses, but, but let's just put it like this. If they just went with the standard separation from the traffic, not the fully elevated into the heaven style, this line is getting a B tier or even a C tier or even a D tier, I don't know. No, this line is definitely getting a D tier if it's not for this elevated section. But because of this elevated section, this is getting an A tier.